sponsored by his book. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the garage. So as you guys probably saw from the title of the video, um, it's not really a real exciting video. It's not a jovial video by any means. Uh, not that it's sad or depressing, it just kind of sucks. So anyhow, um, as far as video goes and all that, I've really been kind of lackluster on getting content up and doing stuff. And the reason is it's hunting season. So as you guys know, if you've been with the channel, I, I enjoy deer hunting uh, white teal here in Pennsylvania and in Delaware. And down at the hunting camp in Delaware, we had some very good success this year. Um, yeah, shot a beautiful buck, beautiful 11 pointer. He dressed out, or not dressed out, he was live weight, uh, 206 pounds and I couldn't be happier. He's going on the wall. We're gonna get him mounted up, all that. Um, so anywhere, well, anyway, that's kind of where I've been, um, why I haven't been really doing any content with the truck. And that comes to our like main point. Also, Pennsylvania hunting season's kind of getting underway here, so I don't know what the next week or two looks like, but we do have an exciting trip planned. So you look out for that. But anyway, the main point of the video is the unfortunate circumstance with the race truck. So as you guys know, we had our Freedom Racing Engines engine built, um, put in the truck, and when it ran, it didn't run right. We've been having some issues with it, and we've been trying to work through them, and honestly, I'm 100% out of ideas. Um, we've been working with some of the guys from Fleece and Freedom and Hardway, emailing back and forth, sending data logs, doing all kinds of stuff, and we can't figure out what's wrong with the truck. Um, it ran fine in Indiana when I had it on the engine dyno. It purred like a kitten, I was told. Um, and I'm not saying any of that is incorrect, but something either I hooked up or something happened between there and here, and we can't figure out what's going on. So it's looking like we're gonna have to fly a professional out to uh, help with this. I have tried every means of figuring this thing out that I can think of. Um, if you look at it, I actually ran it earlier tonight, which I'll show you now. As you can see, very smoky, still running very rough, rocking the whole truck. Um, if you look at the data log, our fuel quantities are all over the place, either 
my my personal opinion is it's either something well it's something electronic i feel but it's something's either not reading right or the ecm's not computing it right something's going on there um as you can see i have a five gallon fuel jug here we've been running it out of that our mechanical uh fuel pump is actually pulling fuel out of there just to eliminate like draw issues from our um, fuel cell also all our fuels on fuel lines i have all our zip ties off and everything loose to try and eliminate you know possible um uh, to eliminate possible problems with that maybe something was restricted or whatnot can't figure it out um i pulled our whole breakout tuning solutions harness off the truck i pinned everything out um i've also uh, bypass our mechanical lift pump to allow the CP3 pumps to draw uh, fuel through them to eliminate that and still we just can't figure out what's going on with this thing so that sucks um, it's nobody's fault we're not shedding any blame anywhere it's just something we can't figure out it could be something stupid um, as you can see from the wires on the ground here I actually ran our computer right off the battery trying to eliminate, you know, possibly we were getting some kind of a, a dirty voltage or something, some kind of interference from our little uh, panel in here, our electrical panel. Doesn't seem to be the case. Nothing really makes this thing happy. So we got fresh fuel, we've done all our wiring and still can't figure it out. So. I've made the decision you guys know I've been pushing to get this thing to the track and it's all but December and by the time the video comes up it's liable to be December so I'm calling it we're done we're not getting the truck to the track in 2019 so 2019 is a passless year we haven't made a single quarter mile pass but that means we can start our winter work um, I have a lot of ideas for the truck now nothing we do should be as complicated or complex as our cage you know, um, we built our uh, 25 six cert cage, or pretty much mostly a 25 six cert cage. We're missing a couple bars, but it should qualify as an 850 cage rather easily. And it took all year. It really was way more time consuming than I ever thought, um, but we made some changes, pulled every wire off the truck. This project just kind of got away from me, out of control. But we're here now and we're gonna start our winter work. So what is our winter work? Well, honestly, it's not 100% ironed out, but I would like to make small changes to the truck just to um, kind of progress it further to where I want it to be, but to not hold it up. Like I said, we're not taking any big projects on, like we're not back half in the truck or four link in the truck or anything like that. We're just gonna make small changes that you know, to stuff I don't like and just get the truck ready and hopefully have it ready for the Outlaw Diesel Super Series next year. Um, I think the first race is beginning mid-March down in Florida and that's kind of our goal is to have it ready for that. So we're gonna make small changes and go from there. If it's something large, we'll wait between races or something like that, but that's kind of our main focus. Now, talking about our main focus, we don't need this 15 gallon fuel cell. Our original plan with the truck was to kind of have this sleeper-esque truck, have a fuel cell in the back, but have a cap on it, tailgate, all that. Well, we don't need 15 gallons. So I think we're gonna be switching to a smaller fuel cell, possibly moving it up closer to the front of the truck because that way it'll eliminate all these lines back here. Another problem, and I had one of you guys comment on this in the one video and I'm not happy about it. Our rear window turned out perfect, but if you look at our two bars, they are not. So somehow through the course of doing the cage, our two bars coming out of the back ended up one inch difference. So that bar on the passenger side is one inch lower than on the driver's side. Um, I can't stand it because when you stand behind the truck, it just looks so goofy. Um, maybe on video it doesn't show, but just me physically standing here, I don't like it. So we need to move this bar up or we need to move this bar down. We got to figure that out, but that means we need a new window, yada, yada, yada. I screwed that up. I couldn't tell without the window in there, but as soon as I get the window in there, yeah. I wasn't happy. I didn't point it out to you guys because I figured we'd get, be getting the thing to the track, but that's a problem that needs fixed. 
So as far as that goes, we need to do that. I'm also looking at getting some fiberglass for the truck. Um, as you guys know, our doors, this full door weighs about 100 pounds. Um, a fiberglass door is about 12. So I'm looking to get some fiberglass doors, bedsides, haven't decided on the front of the truck yet, but that'll help with our door uh, fitment situation and all that. We can shave the fiberglass down, no problem. But it's all kind of little stuff like that. So also, as you guys know, I kind of said we were putting the front end of the truck together just kind of temporarily to get it to the track. And by that, I mean, we don't really need this big fourth gen radiator. These 2010 to 2012 trucks come with this very large factory radiator and for a street application, great, but we don't need all that. So what I would like to do is get rid of this, get rid of our flex light fans, go to a smaller radiator and fan setup and put it in the back of the truck here since we have all this room for activities. <sighs> so anyway, guys, as you can see, I have plans for this winter um, to upgrade the truck, but nothing is so major that it should keep us from having the truck ready. We still have to figure out exactly what's going on with the engine um like i said we will probably be flying someone out to help us with that because it's beyond me it's beyond something we can do with email or phone calls or text messages um i've checked all the connectors on the truck i don't know how many times it's it's really just beating me up as far as trying to figure out what's going on um if you have a suggestion i would love to hear it i mean i am open to anything like that but I even had a friend of my father's, uh, he, my father had said, hey, uh, you know, a buddy of his who's been a diesel mechanic all his life, he, he'd like to look at it. And he thought of a couple things like with the fuel lines, possibly we had a restriction, maybe the fuel line coming from the tank since we were pulling from our mechanical fuel pump was closing off. That's why we started running it off of a can of diesel. No change, but hey, that's all the learning process. We've done something with a fourth gen here that not many people have done. And uh, yeah, we hit a roadblock. It sucks, but it's the end of the year anyway. So it's time to get onto our winter work and all that. So anyway, guys, I know this has been all of me talking, um, but that's the update. That's what's going on with the truck, where I've been, and kind of where we're gonna do, where we're gonna be moving forward. Also, I've been looking for another project. Um, as you guys know, this truck has pretty much consumed the entire channel um, for the most part this year. Yes, we had a, another truck that we had put a transmission in and yada, 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 but the race truck has been pr pretty much my main focus. So I'm looking to find something to fill the void. So we work on the race truck, work on a project, so-and-so, but, let me know what you guys think. Um, definitely looking at like first gen, second gen, stuff like that. We have the common rail thing kind of covered here, but let me know what you guys think we should do. Um, I would definitely be open to it. Uh, first gen or second gen would be great, but to find a rust free, clean first or second gen here in Pennsylvania and them not want an arm and a leg for it is pretty hard to do. Uh, I'm sorry, but if you have a second gen and has any rust on it, it's not worth 10 grand. I know you might think it is, and maybe that will sell for that, but to me it's not. It's still an old truck, and uh, honestly, they're not that special. But anyway, guys, that's kind of where we're at. Let me know what kind of projects you'd like to see. So sorry for all the talking, but that's where we're at. That's where we're headed. Get out in your garage, get the wrenching on your truck, 